So today we're going to be talking about one of maybe the coolest animals on the planet, and that is boas. When we come back, and intrepid exotics. So this guy right here is what's known as a boa imperator. His name's Charlie, and he got that because of the little Charlie Chaplin mustache he's got. Um, and he's really a he's really a pretty fortunate guy. He um, he came to us from some folks that had just had a house fire. Their electricity was off, and it was February out here in North Carolina, so it was really cold, and they were struggling to heat their reptile room. This guy right here, um, he was ice cold when we got him. And had a pretty good respiratory infection. Um, I'm pretty certain that if uh, if we hadn't gotten to him when we would have, or when we did rather, he probably wouldn't be here because uh, he was struggling for a while. And we got him nursed back to health, got that respiratory infection cleared, got him warmed back up, and he has just been a champ ever since. Um, this guy is really awesome. Bo is a really awesome pet. You're going to find them typically around six to seven feet as adults. There's outliers, you know, some of them may get up to 12 feet. Um, but uh, as a general rule, that's what you can expect. Uh, Charlie here, he's somewhere between six and seven feet, I think. But um, they're a little bit harder to read than the reed ticks and the berms are. As you can see, the way he's sitting right there, boas tend to, their relaxed state tends to have that little S pattern to their neck. And we always associate that with a snake that's getting ready to strike, but that's how they that's how they sit most of the time. Uh, you know, most of the time when I go into his enclosure, that's how he is. So, um, you know, if I was to see my retic sitting like that, I may think that she was getting defensive, and you know, maybe getting ready to take a pop at me. But uh, with Charlie, he's like that all the time. So you don't really know if he's sleeping or if he's just relaxing or if he's really, you know, doesn't feel like being messed with and, and may end up letting you know in a minute. So you, you got to be kind of careful with these guys um, and just make sure that you're using your, your hook training and everything. Uh, make sure that you're approaching them right and not spooking them because these guys are ready to go at any second. But again, just like any other snake, you know, these guys, they're not mean, they're not aggressive. Um, you know, if you do end up having a bad experience with them, it's, uh, it's because of something you did wrong. So, now one of the cool thing about boas, and this is a common boa here, he's boa imperator, but um, in the family of boas, there's a lot of diversity. Um, and, you know, real smaller, you know, two foot long sand boas who are really interesting looking. Um, yeah, emerald tree boas, which are completely arboreal. Um, they look a lot different from the imperators here. And all the way up to the anacondas. Anacondas are actually in the same family, so anacondas are boas. And, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, those are the heaviest snakes in the world. Now once I get a little bit more space, that's on my list. I really want to get a green anaconda here. Um, I'm just fascinated with them. They're gorgeous, gorgeous animals. But um, one thing that I found is that I think pound for pound, boas are, are stronger than the retics and the berms. Um, these guys, being arboreal like they are, and they're really adept climbers, um, they're really strong. They've got They've got a little bit different body shape to him too, and it, it's probably hard to tell from the angle here, and I'm gonna try not to disturb him too much because he's finally calmed down. But you may be able to see, they've got a more square body profile to him. Um, not entirely sure what the reason is behind that. I'm sure evolution had its reasons. But it's, uh, it's really cool, and it, uh, for whatever reason, it lends these guys to be really super strong. Um, when he's hanging on to me, trying to explore, and you know he'll latch on. Sometimes he'll get around my arm, and, and he's on there for ten seconds, and it starts to go numb. And you can see a really good example of, like I said, how they like to sit there, 
um, with that little S, S turn in their neck always looks like they're getting ready to strike but uh, this guy's about as relaxed as he could be right now as far as care for these guys they're gonna come in you know really close to you know the same same type of enclosures same type of food um, you know really similar heat and humidity requirements as your berms and your retics so there's not a whole lot you know really special that you're gonna have to provide for them uh, they do love their water he loves to be in his water bowl as much as he can one thing about boas too is they will definitely let you know if they want to be left alone um, I'll put up a video here this was right about the time he just kind of started getting over his respiratory infection uh, he had just shed um, still had some mucus that he was getting rid of that you can see in there but uh, I went into the enclosure and he didn't want anything to do with me he just wanted to be left alone he just gotten out of his old skin and you can see he was very verbal um, about warning me that he didn't want to be messed with so those are one of those times that you just kind of respect their wishes and you know you make sure that you're gonna have you know as many good experiences and as few bad experiences as you can yeah, I could have probably went in there and worked with him, got him out, but uh, yeah, there's no point in that. You know, if he if he wants to be left alone, especially at that point when he was still recovering from being sick, I just left him in there. You know, I really can't say enough good things about boas as pets, though. There's a lot of really positive aspects to keeping boas. Um, first of all, if you like if you like the big strong constrictors but you don't want to have to manage an animal that's going to get 16, 18 feet long on you that you're going to need multiple people to handle. Bows are a really good choice. Um, you know, they're, they're big enough constrictors to where you don't really have to worry about hurting them. Yeah, they're strong, they're sturdy, um, and they can have a lot of personality sometimes too. Um, just really amazing animals. You know, since these guys love to climb, as well I mean if you wanted to make a big display enclosure for them uh, with a bunch of trees and things like that you know even enclosures you know six seven feet high um, pretty sure these guys would utilize every inch of it um, you know like I said they love to climb they love to explore and you know Charlie here he's just a really good-natured guy so you, you'll hear different things sometimes um, you know as far as beginner intermediate and advanced snakes um, I'd classify boas, you know, my personal opinion is they're intermediate. Um, I'd, I'd kind of uh, define beginner snakes as things like corn snakes and king snakes and garters and ball pythons and things like that. The smaller snakes that, you know, if you were to reach your hand down in the enclosure and they got a hold of you, it's not going to be uh, not going to be a very dramatic event. The intermediate snakes, yeah, I'd probably say maybe dwarf retics and boas, um, carpet pythons, things of that nature are going to fall into that category just because, you know, they're not going to kill you, but you do have to kind of be careful with them, you know, because some of them are a little bit more reactive than others. You know, when you get a snake that's six, seven feet long too, um, you know, especially something like emerald tree boas that have got some really massive teeth on them. Yeah, they can they can still hurt you if they get a hold of you. But um, and then you know expert level snakes, that's going to be something typically that you you've got to have more than one person around to handle. Um, you know, large retics, large bo or large burmies rather. Um, when those start out, when they're young, you know those are those are all the way intermediate snakes. But once you're getting over 10, 12 feet, something like that. Um, really in your best interest to have two people around and I think anything that you've got to have more than one person to handle should be classified as an expert snake um, but boas are really uh, you know these guys aren't too bad at all um, they're just they're just active enough to where you can really kind of interact with them and um, yeah as you can see sooner or later they do kind of get tired and uh, start to mellow out a little bit 
I've always, I'll always love my reed takes and my berms, but there's just something about a boa constrictor and the way they look and the way they handle themselves uh, that I always find just, just awesome. You know, love the colors on these guys. So I just wanted to take some time to properly introduce everybody to Charlie here, get him a little bit of screen time, kind of tell you guys what you can expect if you decide to go this route and get you a boa. Um, like I said, these, these guys are pretty awesome. Definitely, definitely amazing animals. Um, yeah, this guy's just, he eats awesome for me. He's really well behaved. He's never taken a shot at me before. And, um, and I really like to think that maybe there's a part of him in there somewhere that has a special affinity for us because, uh, you know, like I said, there's probably a pretty good chance he wouldn't have made it if, uh, he would have been in the environment that he was in for very much longer. So, you know, really happy to have him with us. So. so after some time when we end up getting into a bigger place, it's got more room that I can fit more enclosures in, you know, I intend on having some uh, really cool arboreal snake enclosures that we can keep some emerald tree boas in. I'd really love to have a nice big enclosure for a green anaconda and look forward to being able to put out some pretty awesome content with them once that rolls around so again guys like subscribe get notified when the new stuff comes out got a couple more that i want to put out this week uh one of them probably going to do my now monitor this week and you definitely won't want to miss that he is an interesting fellow to say the least so i hope you all have an outstanding day and i will see you next time on intrepid exotics